Alan Turing was truly a renaissance man. If you uh, probably were able to view the new movie, The Imitation Game, the biopic about Alan Turing's life, you would see many of the very inspiring but also deflating uh, parts of his life. Uh, he was the father of computer science and AI. He, of course, uh, formalized the concepts of algorithms and computations with the Turing machine. He was a very strong athlete in his personal life, though he also suffered great personal losses. Uh, of course, he was a gay man in a time of very really unfair laws against homosexuality and of course he was he suffered uh, chemical castration, castration by sentenced. being injected with estrogen which later culminated in his suicide two years after that um, but he made so many important discoveries that we use today uh, the basis of everywhere uh, but one of one of them was overlooked of course his his one um, paper regarding biology, science, and that was morphogenesis. Basically what ends up happening is we overlook the biological science contributions because up until very recently, this is 60 years after his death, so this is posthumous, we haven't been able to corroborate some of the things that he hypothesized mm -hmm. on this paper. So he talked about morphogenesis, which is the idea of natural pattern formation. The leopard and its spots, the zebra and its stripes, the tiger. Um, and the idea being that there are two uh, chemical components, the activator and the inhibitor, mm -hmm. and that when you spread those on some cells, which is how cells specialize eventually to form these patterns, what happens is some, the activator, activates the formation of the pattern and the inhibitor inhibits it. Mm -hmm. Here's the best analogy that I found while reading this. If you have a patch of very dry grass and you have grasshoppers spread throughout, if you light the grass on fire, Mm -hmm. It'll start burning, but the spots that are getting wet because of the grasshoppers will end up staying dry because they won't burn. So you'll end up having this pattern like the leopard spots. And this is the way it would happen in uh, cell um, differentiation. Yes, so it's like how uh, seemingly a, a similar or the same, the same cell would, re would uh, create differentiated uh, organ organic parts, like exactly. different parts of an animal, mm -hmm. or maybe, you know, as you said, spots, stripes, patterns, and it's with that reaction diffusion. Exactly. And um, one of the things that, you know, um, Turing really helped kind of clarify with this are some of the biggest mysteries. We don't really understand how this system works. Here is the, I guess, counterpart, or playing devil's advocate a little bit. It's almost oversimplified for a lot of researchers. So this theory that, of course, there's two chemicals, and they are randomly you know, spread throughout cells, and some activate and some you know, inhibit, is a little bit too simplistic for people to accept as a theory. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what's been happening. But you know, we're finding this resurgence of, of um, interest in Turing's life, which is really interesting. You know, he was granted royal pardon for the way he was treated last year, or 2013, yeah, last year. It's Confused on the year. It's almost. So, you know, he was granted royal pardon, which was, I guess, good, better late than never. And again, we see the movies and we see a, a new resurgence in this interest. So this research was validated just this year uh, by two professors, Seth Radin, professor of physics, and Irv Epstein, the Henry F. Fishbach professor of chemistry. They created rings of synthetic cell-like structures and activated and inhibited certain chemical reactions to test the model, and they, were found, they found that his theory was true. Uh, the once identical structures were then chemically different and began to change in their size due to osmosis. And this, can, this is an example of how this works in the biological world, but can also be applied to the synthetic world and we would be able to actually help grow soft robots with certain patterns and shapes uh, in this way that's very, well it's, it's biological, but synthobio? Synthobiology? Synth synthetic biology? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's still his research is extremely important and uh, influential to the world today. Never ending fascinating life of Alan Turing. Yes. So Alan Turing led a remarkable life that is continuing to uh, affect and influence science and math and computers. Today, what do you feel was his biggest accomplishment? Let us know what you think below in the comments, and please be sure to subscribe.